Hi everybody, Jennifer Blevins-Smith with Integral Clinic Solutions, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Today we're going to talk about prior authorizations on how to collect the information you'll need for submitting those applications, and also how to track them. First, I wanna remind you that my website has blogs for all my videos on it. Some of them might have helpful links as well, so make sure you check that out. Prior authorizations, oh, so many people cringe when they hear that, <laughs> and I am one of those people. I have been in healthcare long enough to know when prior authorizations weren't really a thing, to now that the insurance has even more control and say over things, there are so many things that need prior authorizations. Medications, diagnostic imaging, even sometimes some office visits or treatments, I mean, it's just crazy. It's also an administrative burden on a lot of small practices. And it is one of those things that you need to be able to do and do efficiently because they can be so time consuming, but also because the people who are in charge of those most likely have other responsibilities in the practice that they need to be able to uh, get finished every day as well. Prior authorizations. So when prior authorization started becoming uh, more of a trend, if you will. I caught myself being kind of the go-to prior authorization obtainer in our practice. And it was kind of one of those things where we were in uncharted waters. Insurances hadn't really figured out who they're gonna use as a third party to get those prior authorizations. We were kind of in between the whole faxing the request and submitting online. So we we're kind of, it was hard to track who needed what, where, and everything. So what I did is I <laughs> created a template for myself and I gave it to the other medical assistants in the practice. And I said, here, before you get on the phone to call for that prior auth, because there were also times where you could still call on the phone to get prior authorizations, if, especially if you needed them right away. I don't know if you can do that anymore. Um, but before you start the process, here is a template, fill it out, it will give you all the stuff you're gonna need, and then move on from there. The important information that you're always going to need for submitting a prior authorization request, you're going to need the patient's information. So their name, their full name, and how it is at the insurance company. If you're sending things in, they might want a copy of the insurance card. I don't know. You're going to need to know their insurance. You're going to need to know their subscriber ID. You're going to need to maybe know the subscriber's information. So if it's a parent or a spouse and their date of birth, those are all really important things. So all the patient demographics. Then you're gonna need to know the CPT code in which you're trying to get the prior authorization. Now I don't know if that's so much for medications and it, mind you, it's been a while since I've worked in patient care. Uh, usually that's just the medication name and the dose and frequency but if it's for a service, you need to know the CPT code. I was very lucky that a local imaging company knew things were getting tough when it came to requesting prior authorization. So they actually provided us a handout of all of their diagnostic imaging services in which they bill and that they perform and it had the CPT codes and it was even broken down to like MRI without contrast, MRI with contrast, MRI with and without contrast and they just put together a really beautiful sheet that listed all of those so I could go okay they want an MRI of this I'd ask the doctor is this one that usually needs um, any kind of dye or or contrast yes or no he would tell me and we would go from there. You also need to know relevant diagnosis codes that will support that test. That's the key. It can't be an unspecified and other. It needs to be a very specific diagnosis code of why you're ordering it. And then you also need to be able to let them know what you're trying to identify and or rule out. 
So you need to have the CPT code or codes for the services in which you need the prior off. You need the very specific diagnosis codes in which why you're ordering those tests. And you need to know what you're trying to find or what you're trying to rule out by the test. Yeah, I'm serious. It's, it, there's more, just hold on. So not only do you have those, but you also have to show what they've tried and failed and why you're at the point of ordering this test. So for a lot of things, it's like step therapy, right? For medications, have they tried the generic? Have they tried generic combinations, etc.? For tests like MRIs, have they done physical therapy? Have they tried um, massage therapy? I mean, I don't know. There's all these different things. Have they tried medication management? So you want to make sure that you know their history of this diagnosis and this ongoing problem so that you can list what they have tried and failed, what has not worked. There are always some buzz words or buzz reasons like um, it used to be and it could be different now, but for a lumbar spine MRI, if they had a foot drop, if they were incontinent all of a sudden, there are certain symptoms and signs that they were like, oh, we don't need step therapy, this is serious, we'll, we'll go ahead and move forward and approve it. But I have a feeling there's very few of those and it's more of you know making sure that they've done the medication management. How long has it been going on for? That's another question. The duration of the symptoms, have they gotten worse? They basically want to know the whole history because they want to make sure that you have, or the doctor, provider, has attempted other ways to try and resolve this challenge with the patient and their symptoms before jumping into whatever, whatever it is that you need to get the prior authorization for. You'll need to include any relevant chart notes. If they've had x-rays and you're doing advanced imaging, they'll want to see the results of the x-ray. It's always nice when the x-ray goes, it's clear we recommend an MRI or the ultrasound looks normal, we recommend an MRI for further evaluation. Oh, I loved seeing that. But you'll want to take that. I mean, anything that will support why you're taking this next step and why you feel this expensive treatment, medication, uh, imaging service is necessary is going to be important. I know this is a lot of work <laughs> and it really takes someone who understands pathologies, uh, patient uh, care, somebody who understands all of that. And I'm not saying that front desk staff can't do that or medical assistants because I did it, but it just needs to be somebody who understands what's needed, how to find it, how to support all the information and to have all of the documents together to either scan it, upload it, fax it, however it needs to be submitted anymore to all go together. Because if you're missing something, if um, something doesn't look accurate, if it's too vague, it's not very specific, they will deny it and kick it back. So make sure that you gather all this information ahead of time, double check and make sure everything's there and then send it off. And the more you do it, the more it becomes second nature and it becomes a lot easier. But at first you feel a little overwhelmed going, oh my gosh. And then, like I said, it just gets easier and easier. If you have any questions or comments, please leave that in the comments below. If you have experience with having to obtain prior auths yourself, I would love to hear from you, so please leave that in the comments as well. Smash the thumbs up button if today's video was helpful. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And please share this video with anybody in your office whom is responsible for prior authorizations or colleagues that you know are struggling with trying to implement these workflows or finding the information. I hope they find this helpful. Take care, be well, we'll talk next time. Bye-bye.